I just want to say this. We are physiologically frugivores. Like, our bodies are designed to get most of our calories from fruit. Period. There's massive amounts of evidence that demonstrate that fruit is the most appropriate staple source of calories for people, for human beings, for homo sapiens. That evidence is very broad. You can get it simply by extrapolating all other sources of nutrition other than fruit and attempting to be significantly active on that without consuming excessive quantities of nutrients. So protein is a good example, which is in such a high concentration in beans, dairy, nuts, and meat, and a lot of vegetables as well, that that prevents uh, consumption for many of these things as, as of, of little as 2,000 calories. So a person can't even eat 2,000 calories of, say, steak because the amount of protein exceeds the ability of their, their liver to synthesize urea to get rid of the ammonia that's a byproduct of the breaking down of the protein. The ammonia gets in their blood bloodstream, can get to the blood-brain barrier, cross it, and uh, significant problems. So that just says right there, Meat's inappropriate as a staple, especially lean meat. Uh, there is a potential argument that you can eat a very high fat diet, but fat doesn't have many nutrients at all associated with it and conflicts with consuming any sugar. Fat stays in the bloodstream and then any sugar stays in the bloodstream. And so uh, it's kind of like an either or thing. You can go high fat and pretty much no sugar or you can go high sugar. Uh, people will pick the sweet because it's better than meat. Okay, now, so then there's meat. Beans, they have so much protein that the amount of calories that you can get from them are very limited. And not only protein, but phosphorus is another concern. Phosphorus is also something that is uh, in great amounts in grains. The uh, Institute of Medicine, the Food and Nutrition Board, the National Academy of Sciences have set a, the tolerable upper limit of phosphorus consumption at 4 grams. If you eat only 3,000 calories of oats, you will exceed 4 grams of phosphorus. That says that oats are inappropriate for a staple on a daily basis of calories for human nutrition and energetic needs. Uh, the, the fact that oats were not consumed in significant quantities until 10,000 years, as well as the other grains, some even uh, more recently, there's also evidence that it's uh, um, that they have been around for longer. Some studies are revealing that 25,000 years ago might be the, the time, but the present nutritional profile remains the same. There is a tolerable upper limit of phosphorus after which one has symptoms of hyperphosphatemia, which is symptoms of having too much phosphorus, will be met by consuming as little as 3,000 calories and at most 5,000 calories. Some some actually less. I, I believe wheat has so much phosphorus that it's uh, something like 2,500 calories that can be consumed before excessive phosphorus is uh, is ingested. So uh, that matter, also the fact that grains are completely deficient in vitamin C, have no vitamin C whatsoever, that they are acid-forming and not alkaline-forming, all make them clearly suboptimal uh, fuel, food, nutrition. And uh, the fact that they require cooking, which frequently leads to acrylamide, 
which is a carcinogen, or to rancid fats if there's a, a fat content. Granted, there are ways to uh, to prepare food, for example, boiling, which will keep the temperature at a certain point, 100 degrees, which might not lead to rancid fat. Uh, but again, this is showing that a technology is necessary to consume this potential food, which makes it less likely the food that we evolved to eat. Now, I know that people are going to respond and say the fact that we may not have consumed a certain food as, uh, uh, as recently as 11,000 years ago does not necessarily say that that's not a good food, and that's totally true. Uh, you know, you could develop a new uh, fruit or a new vegetable or, you know, there's uh, maybe soil somewhere is more nutritious and uh, fertile than it was before. And so what's being produced there is better than ever in history. That's totally possible. Uh, but there is the, the basic experience test. There, there is, well, how good do you feel eating 6,000 calories of oats? or 3,000 calories even, or 4,000 calories, or even 2,000 calories, and then compare that to a ripe, fresh, organic fruit that's consumed in a state where you can readily absorb it. And it's important to point that out because you're probably full of shit, literally, like most Americans, and your digestive system is probably not operating that effectively. And this is also a fantastic argument and evidence for the superiority of a fresh, raw, ripe, organic diet is how wonderful the digestive system feels at all times without any mental effort whatsoever, other than the initial shifts that requires in order to understand how to eat properly. So what I'm saying is like, I can eat 20 bananas and I just feel great. Okay, actually 20 bananas... I'll feel pretty full. But 10 bananas, 15 bananas after a, after a workout, 15 banana smoothie, I've done that a million times. 10 million times. I've done that many times, okay? And maybe half an hour later, I can eat more. That's not true, you say. You can't eat 10 bananas. You can't eat 20 bananas. That's too many bananas. The bananas you're thinking of are probably unripe, sprayed with a fungicide that causes sterility. Okay, the bananas I'm referring to are organic, fair trade. They make the grade. Okay, so there's, um, this is also another reason why people might be uh, resistant to the idea of fruit being their primary source of calories because they're not familiar with good fruit. If you've been in the supermarket and you've had some nasty oranges, nasty apples, nasty unripe bananas, and that's your idea of what fruit is, and you're thinking that this guy here is suggesting that you eat a bunch of nasty fruit instead of your super stimulating MSG, uh, deep fried, you know, acrylamide laden, you know, whatever bacon bits, you know, uh, or your 15 type morphine, excuse me, opiate containing wheat products, uh, whole wheat products. Uh, then of course you're like, yeah, I'd rather have these you know, wheat, wheat products with some fat and salt and so on, then some nasty fruit, and that totally makes sense. But if you analyze the nutrition, you'll see that fruit has a superior nutritional profile uh, on, on most counts. You know, like you can compare, but more isn't necessarily better. So you say, oh, well, beans have more protein. Yeah, they have so much protein that you have to limit their consumption on a daily basis. What's funny is that you you might not feel that you have to limit your consumption because it's difficult, actually. It's literally difficult to consume a significant amount of calories from them. Like, I, I eat like a champion. <laughs> and, like, it is difficult for me to eat tons of beans. Like, to eat tons of potatoes also is something that, that is a lot more difficult. It is very easy for me to eat fruit. That's not true, you say. Fruit is, it's difficult to eat. Fruit gives me gas. Fruit does this. Fruit does that. Yeah, if your system is filled up with a bunch of gunk, you know, eating fruit might put you in a funk, okay? <laughs> but it's not fruit's fault. Um, okay, so we've got protein, okay? Now, protein. There's just 
an upper limit to how much protein you can handle. There's a very small amount also that you actually need and are going to use. Any excess is just more acid for your body to deal with. And the amount that you actually need might be something like 60 grams. If you eat beans for your primary source of calories, it, unless you're doing tiny, uh, tiny amount of calories, then you're getting excess protein. Okay, a bunch of different potential foods all fail on the scaling calories without going way overboard on protein. And the numbers can be as low as 1,000 calories for lean meats, you know, 2,000 calories for soybeans, maybe three to 4,000 calories for, for, most, for most beans and seeds and, and a lot of nuts too. So, you know, if it's around 20% or higher in, in protein percentage by the calorie, you're stopped at around 4,000 calories with how much you can healthfully eat. Now, you might be saying, well, what about a mixed diet, you know, and you should be mixing a lot of things. But you can't really do that with grains and beans. Uh, they just all have a lot of, of protein. There are some lower protein grains, actually, though. There are some that are, say, 4 or 5%. So you could potentially eat many calories without going overboard. That makes them more appropriate for uh, a staple source of calories. But they're still not as healthful, and they're not able to provide the nutrition that fruit do. Fruit provide all vitamins, all minerals. That's not true. What about vitamin D and vitamin B12? Vitamin D, something that can be uh, uh, created through through sunlight, and vitamin B12 is something that is uh, present, should be present in organic produce and through uh, fluids. So that people actually recommend uh, engaging in sexual things to get fluids. Um, I would never recommend anything like that. What else is there to say? Vegetables, greens, they are good and delicious. They're, they're foods that don't require any mental moderation. That it's just simple. You eat until your body is satisfied. That is the case for raw, fresh, ripe organic fruits and uh, leafy greens. And it's not the case for cheese. It's not the case for processed foods. It's not the case for cooked foods. You just don't get satisfied as quickly as you do. So I can eat 10 pounds of potatoes in a sitting, and I've done this. Cooked potatoes, of course. And I don't feel satisfied, not, not in the way that, you know, just 10 bananas can satisfy me. Now, the, the caloric difference is 1,000 versus 4,500. Okay, so it's a, it's a big difference. You'd think you'd get satisfied having 10 pounds of potatoes, uh, but maybe you don't. Um, there are some fruits like cantaloupes and berries and kiwis, honeydew, that really, really, really well match the, the nutritional needs of human beings. Like when you get your caloric needs, you're getting 98% of your nutritional needs. You talk about these other things. You talk about beans and grains, meat and dairy. You either get massively excessive amounts or you get complete deficiencies. So none of those work. None of those work for, for the, the truth that we, like every other species on the planet, do have a simple diet that is specific to our design. Go to the farmer's market. Find whatever organic fruit you are most attracted to and buy a case so that you get a case discount. You, know, you can negotiate a little bit. And then eat a meal-sized portion of that fruit in a public area. 